Under the Constitution, the President of the United States is the head of the executive branch of the federal government. He's not in charge of the Congress, and he's not in charge of the federal courts, just the executive branch of the government. That means he has three responsibilities. The first is to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution itself, which guarantees that your liberties and your freedoms remain secure. The second is to enforce the laws that the Congress has written. And the third is to be the commander in chief of the United States military. The executive power of the federal government is granted by the Constitution to the President of the United States. His principal job, as set forth in the Constitution, is to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution itself. His additional jobs are to be the chief law enforcer of all federal laws, the commander in chief of the military and the chief foreign diplomat in the country's relations with other countries and international organizations. He also appoints all senior officials in the executive branch, all cabinet members, all generals and admirals, and all federal judges and Supreme Court justices. Virtually all of his appointments require the consent of the United States Senate, but not the House of Representatives. The President has the power to sign into law the legislation that is sent to him by Congress and the power to veto legislation. Since neither House of Congress can act without the agreement of the other, except for the Senate when it alone may and must confirm judicial and executive appointments and ratify treaties, the President may only sign into law or may only veto that which has passed both the House and the Senate. If and when he signs legislation, it becomes law at the moment he signs it. If he vetoes the legislation, it can only become law if both houses of Congress vote by a two-thirds majority of each house to override his veto. If one of the two houses fails to obtain a two-thirds vote to override his veto, then the legislation is dead for the remainder of that session of Congress. If he neither signs nor vetoes the legislation, then it becomes law without his signature 10 days after he has received it from Congress. As the chief protector of the Constitution, the president is charged with assuring Americans that everyone in the executive branch of the federal government, which numbers well over 3 million persons, uses the power of the government consistent with the Constitution. Thus, the president is lawfully required that every federal agent whether from the FBI or the CIA or the IRS, for example, every member of the military, from the lowest private to the highest general, and every bureaucrat, whether appointed by him or employed as a life civil servant, upholds the Constitution and obeys the federal laws and the laws of the states in which they may be located. This obligation to assure compliance with the Constitution and the federal laws of everyone in the executive branch includes, of course, the president himself. He cannot pick and choose which laws to enforce, which laws to obey, and which laws to ignore. He cannot decline to spend money that Congress has directed be spent. He cannot disregard a treaty simply because he disagrees with it. He can, however, decline to appoint federal officials and thus frustrate the ability of Congress to have the executive branch enforce the laws in a timely and efficient manner. If the president himself engages in behavior that is arguably unconstitutional, and if someone, American or foreign, is injured by his behavior, and if the injured person sues the president asking a federal judge to prevent further unconstitutional behavior on the part of the president, and if that person prevails in court, then a single federal judge has the power under the Constitution to order the president of the United States to cease from his planned behavior. This has happened countless times in American history, and many presidents have unlawfully disregarded orders of federal judges unless and until they have been affirmed by the Supreme Court. From George Washington to Barack Obama, virtually every president has enhanced the power of the presidency, either by asking for more power from the Congress which the Congress has frequently and often unlawfully given to him when asked, or by doing just whatever he wishes and hoping and expecting 
that no one is powerful enough to stop him. Most modern presidents have contended that their principal job is to keep us safe. They are wrong. The Constitution says that the president's first job is to keep us free. If he keeps us safe, but not free, he is not doing his job. With the passage of time, the president's responsibilities, of course, have changed. The founding fathers and President George Washington could never have imagined the presidential responsibilities of today. But the Constitution has not changed, and the limits on the government have not changed. And the president's principal job is to assure that all Americans remain free.